turn to Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter number 6, Nehemiah chapter number 6, uh, a couple weeks ago before the storm hit, uh, God impressed on my heart to preach this message, and I was sitting with the preacher last night, and we were just talking about various things, and, and um, I asked him, you know, or actually he had, he had said, I saw what you post online about um, the, the message that you're going to be preaching tomorrow, and I said, yeah. He said, man, he said, I just about want to get somebody to preach for me to come listen to what you got to say. Well, I thought to myself after he said that, I said, you know, I said, uh, God's got a word for us. People's paying attention. People's listening. So God's got a word for us today. And, uh, and, and you know, I never intended to preach Nehemiah as a series. Uh, it's just one of them things I started studying through, started reading, and God just started giving me stuff and started helping, helping me with it. And I thought, you know, if God's helping me, then he can help you with it as well. Uh, a lot of times the messages that I preach comes out of personal devotion time. It comes out of how God's using that word to help me and to, to lead me. And uh, there's, there's quite a few verses th uh, all the way through verse number 16. And I'm not going to read these in their entirety. Uh, I'm going to tell you the story because we're going to be reflecting back over the series of the message here today um, on various places here in the scripture. So here's what I'm going to talk to you about for just a few minutes. Discerning the trickery, discerning the trickery. Uh, the devil is always on the prowl trying to do something to destroy you and to destroy your life. And as we look at the passage of Scripture today, and again, I, uh, like I said, I'm just going to give you a, the, uh, um, just a breakdown, a summary of what the Scripture says, and we will refer back in various places uh, as we preach this message. We know that Nehemiah is building a wall. He has been sent on mission by God to erect this wall. It was birthed in his spirit while he was in Persia to go and to rebuild what had been torn down uh, from Babylonian captivity. And as he goes and he is given uh, the green light by the king uh, to go and to restore his home place. They begin to build a wall, but then anytime you're on mission for God, the devil is always uh, trying to destroy what it is that you are doing. So what happens in this passage of Scripture here, as we find out that Nehemiah is well into building the wall, and Tobias and Sambalat, which were adversaries toward uh, Nehemiah, were sending messengers to Nehemiah uh, four different occasions, and uh, to, to discourage him and to tell him, hey, why don't you come, why don't you meet with us and let us, you know, reason these things together. Well, the problem with that is, is that uh, they were trying to lure him away so that they could do great harm to Nehemiah. And let me just remind you, that's what happens when the devil uh, tries to jump on you. He, he's not, he don't play fair. Uh, he'll bring back up with him. Uh, he'll get a little army to come and, uh, and, and, and to destroy you, just know this, that your God is greater than the God of this world. Amen. Your God is greater than the God of this world. So we find out that he decides, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay the course. God's put me on mission. I'm building a wall. I'm going to get this thing done. They sent uh, these letters saying that you're trying to fortify this city so that you can become a king of your own, which we know as we've studied prior to this, that was not the goal of Nehemiah. The goal of Nehemiah was to fortify the city that was his home place. And, uh, and it wasn't so that he can become king. But then we find out in these passages of Scripture, all the way down through verse number 16, that there was a prophet. And uh, this prophet, uh, his name was Shemaiah. And Shemaiah was sent by uh, these two adversaries of Nehemiah to try and to lure him and trick him to going into the temple, which we know, if you've studied scripture, you'll know that only the priest had the opportunity to go into the temple, into the Holy of Holies, because that was the place that was set for worship. And if he would have went into this temple, if he would have hid in the temple to get away from uh, Tobias and Sambalat, then he would have been in jeopardy of destroying his testimony. And he knew that. And then we find out that as you read through this, that he recognized that. His spirit within him had a check. Can I say this to you here today? 
that we within ourselves better have a check in our spirit when it comes to things of spiritual matters. You say, preacher, I don't know if I've ever had a check in my spirit. I don't know if I've ever been uh, just, you know, alerted, you know, to the things that the devil's trying to do. Here's where I'm going to tell you it comes from. It comes from your devotion to the Lord. It comes from your commitment to the Word of God. It comes from your time in prayer that you develop a spirit of discernment. And he had this spirit of discernment. He was about the Father's business. There was nothing else that he wanted to accomplish except for what God had sent him on mission to do. You see, there's, there's a lot of different things that we find out here in these passages of Scripture that we want to try to uncover here. Uh, but the very first thing I want us to talk about uh, is, 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 is this. What gives a Christian the determination to uh, resist the attack and to finish the wall at all costs? In your life, you must be building some type of spiritual wall at all times. You say, why should I be building a spiritual wall? You've got to stand guard on your wall. If you're not building a wall and fortifying your own spirituality, your own spiritual nature, then you're going to fall subject to the enemy at some point. The enemy is going to come in. He's not going to have to sneak in. He's going to walk in because you have not fortified yourself. So the question is, is what gives us the determination to, uh, to resist the attack and to finish the wall at all costs? He had determination to get it done. He had the determination. You see, the enemy attacks are uh, becoming more and more fierce and even more dangerous than they had been before for Nehemiah. And for you in your personal life, let me say this here, that the devil wants to destroy you and he'll, he'll stop at no cost. He'll, 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 he'll just do things that you wouldn't uh, have thought that he'd have done. He'll use people that you'd have never thought that he'd have used. Now, I'm going to tell you something, folks. The devil has no shame. He will destroy you any way that he can, so you better be fortifying your wall. I like what Peter teaches us in 1 Peter chapter number 5 and verse number 8. He says, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And then the apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse number 13, he says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. You see, I want you to take notice of those two passages of Scripture that I just now gave you, and I want you to take notice of this. There's characteristics that are ascribed to Satan in these two passages of Scripture. The very first thing is, is I want you to notice this, that the devil is a roaring lion who's coming after you. His mission is not to be your friend. His mission is not to make you feel good about yourself. His mission is to destroy you. And he'll use any means necessary to accomplish that. And then I want you to think of this here. That, that, that also, in, as Paul was mentioning here, that he transforms himself into apostles uh, or into the form of the apostles of Christ. He will use anything and anyone to, to accomplish his mission. As we re, re, uh, uh, look at these passages of Scripture, you find out that, uh, that the prophet, as he come before him, was not a prophet of God that was being used of God, but rather was a prophet of the devil. As a matter of fact, when you track down through that Scripture, you'll find out that he was, Shemaiah was hired by Tobias and, uh, 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 and, and the enemy. He was hired by them to lure Nehemiah away. You see, the prophet was transformed into a, an instrument of darkness in that moment. Let me say this here, that it doesn't matter who it is, the devil will destroy you through any means necessary. He'll use your family, he'll use your friends, he'll use your church, he'll use society. He has no respect of a person when it comes to using others as a tool of destruction. You've got to have a spirit of discernment about you because if you don't, you're going to get caught up one day in destruction. You're going to get caught up one day in destruction. Let's go to verse number 2, verse number 2 of this passage of Scripture. Verse number 2 of Nehemiah chapter 6. That Samballot and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let me meet together in some one of the village in the plains of Ono, uh, ono but they thought to do me mischief. So we find out that he's trying to lure 
the, uh, the man of God the, uh, the, the, uh, from his mission to destroy what it is that God is trying to do. Let me say this here. God's trying to do something in your life. He is. God's trying to do a work in you. He's trying to lead you in a place that's going to bring you to great heights. But I'm going to tell you this here. If you're not careful and you don't have the spirit of discernment, he's going to use those around you to drag you down. Let me say this here. I love my family. I love this church. I, 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 I do. I really do. My heart goes out. But I'm going to tell you this right here. If any of y'all or any of my family decides they're going to try to drag me away from the things of God, guess who's cutting ties? Me and you. That's exactly who's cutting ties. Because the mission at hand is far greater than the relationship that I have with somebody who's being used as an instrument of darkness. I'm going to say something here. I want you to understand that it is your responsibility to stay the course, to stay the task. Hey, listen, God's trying to do something in you. Say, preacher, what's he doing? I don't know what it is for you. Hey, but I'm going to tell you right now, God's doing a work in me. I promise you he's going to do a work in you. If you will be ready to hear his voice, they were trying to drag him out into the plains. You know what they were doing? They were trying to get him away from the mission. They didn't come to his ground, but they said come to our ground. That's what they wanted. They wanted him away from what was important to get his eyes off of the mission that God had called him to. That's what the devil will do. He will drag you away from what God's called you to do to get your eyes tor uh, uh, turned toward the plains of destruction. Listen, you can't allow him to do that because if you do, he's going to win the battle in your life. You better have a spirit of discernment about you. The psalmist tells us in Psalm chapter number 1 and verse number 1. He says, Blessed is a man who walked not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nehemiah decided, I'm not going to listen to these men. I'll not go to where they are. I'm not walking in the counsel of the ungodly. But yet, I'm going to stick with the stuff. I'm going to stick with what's got me here. I'm going to stick with where uh, God's taken me. Hey, I'm not going to let the devil destroy what he uh, uh, what God has set in motion and in your life you ought to have that type of determination you ought to have that type of determination that you're not going to allow the devil to compromise the work stay on the wall stay on the wall you've got a wall you need to be building stay on the wall don't give up the greater for the lesser Oh, we have this problem as humanity. We oftentimes, we like what we see that's right in front of us. And, 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 and instantaneous gratification is what, <clears throat> what I'm referring to. Is we like to be gratified right now rather than seeing the big picture. And oftentimes we give up the greater for the lesser. You see, if Nehemiah would have walked away from the wall, there's no telling what would have took place out there in the plains. We know that Nehemiah had a spirit of discernment because he said that they, they, they're looking to do harm toward me. Listen, the devil wants to drag you away so he can do harm to you, your testimony, your family, and anything that looks holy in your life. I'm going to say some of you's probably got some things that you're... you're, you're uh, that you're doing in your life that God's allowing you to be a part of. And I, I want you to know this here. You need with all that who you are, stay the course and don't let the devil drag you into the plains of destruction. Let's look at verse number 5 through verse number 7. Then sent Sambalat his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. Five times. See, he, he did just decided, you know what, the first four times, he said, I ain't listening to that mess. He probably took the letter and just threw it away. He said, you know, I ain't got time for all that. So he had a mission. So he, he was sent the fifth time with a letter in his hand. Go to verse number six. Wherein was written, it is reported among the heathens, and Geshem saith, saith it, that thou and the Jews think it to rebel, with, uh, for which cause thou buildest a wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. Verse number 7. And thou hast also appointed a prophet to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. So when he couldn't get, when they could not get Nehemiah to come off of the wall and come out into the plains, they sent letters with lies in them. Let me say this here. The devil's lying on you. He is. He's been lying on you since you've been born. 
Hey, honey, he's probably been lying on you before you, got, before you was ever born. He's a liar. There's no truth in him. And that's what happens. We find out that there is slanderous reports that are sent to uh, Nehemiah. And see, here's the thing. Tobias and, uh, uh, and Sam Ballot, they had already spread this rumor among the heathens already that he is trying to build a wall he's trying to fortify the city he's trying to become a king of his own and i'm gonna tell you what's going to wind up happening this is what i'm thinking there might be saying if that winds up happening they're going to build an army they're going to overtake us that's slanderous reports against the man of god and the mission of god and i'm gonna tell you something folks there's no difference between this circumstance and the ones in your life and i'm telling you something folks the devil's been lying on you for a long time Amen. he's been telling things on you that's not true you say well preacher that just makes me mad well it makes me mad too but here's what I like to do about that stand up for what's right stand up for what's true do what God's called you to do and God will take care of all the rest of it when we start retaliating ourselves, when we start putting ourselves uh, in the place of authority rather than allowing God to do what God does best, honey, we mess this thing up. Here's what I like about Nehemiah. Nehemiah didn't say, well, let's get us an army together. Let's go out there to the, to the plains of, uh, uh, and meet this guy or these guys. Let's, let, me, let me just get us a, a, a battle uh, um, uh, um, uh, ready and we'll go out and we will destroy it. That's not what he done. Here's what he done. He ignored the devil. Some of y'all need to ignore the devil. Some of you need to just turn your ear away from what he's saying. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what he says. As long as what you're doing is right in the sight of God, the devil's always going to lie. You ain't going to change his mind about it. So just turn your ears away from it. So we find out that he was put in a position to where he was going to have to make a decision. He had to make a decision. I want you to think about this here. There was an attack that we're going to call the wolf in sheep's clothing. I want you to think about the attack that we're going to call a wolf in sheep's clothing. In verse number 10, verse number 10, we find out. Let's turn it, go to verse number 10. Afterwards, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Delilah, Delilah the, son, uh, the son of Methabel, who was shut up, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God, where in the temple, and let us shut the door of the temple, for they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. You know, I'm going to tell you what winds up happening. There is a sheep that will show up in wolf's clothing. Or, excuse me, a wolf in sheep's clothing. I got that backwards, didn't I? We'd recognize him that way. You better have a spirit of discernment to discern whenever the wolf shows up at your door. You see, this guy that came, that Shemaiah, when he came, he was recognized as a prophet. But here's what happened. He had been turned by these men, by, uh, by uh, Tobias and Sam Ballot. He had been hired by them to lead Nehemiah to a place to where his reputation would be absolutely destroyed. Let me say this here. He saw it coming. He saw it coming. He had a spirit of discernment. You've got to have a spirit of discernment or the devil's going to send a wolf and he's going to beat on your door and you're not going to see it. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Here's what Nehemiah did. He said, you know what? I'll tell you what. You can, you can tell me all that stuff you want, but we ain't, we ain't having that. No, I'm not listening to that. I perceive that you're nothing but the devil. Go to verse number 12. Verse number 12. He says, and lo, I perceive that God have not sent him, but that he pronounced his prophecy against me for Tobiah and Sambalat had hired him. You know what wound up happening? He said, I see you for who you are, devil. I see you for what you're doing. I see you for the mess that you're bringing in front of me. And I'm telling you right now, I know that you ain't nothing but a prophet from the devil is what you are. And you got to go. There's going to be some people in your life that you're going to have to put your foot down and say, you know what? You've been leading me away from the house of God. You've been leading me away from the family of God. You've been leading me away from the cross. And I'm going to tell you right now, honey, you got to go. You can't hang around here no more. Hey, I'm going to tell you something, folks. It's okay to part ways with the devil. I'm, a, I'm afraid that what a lot of Christians Christians do is they hem themselves up with the devil. They get up real cozy with him. They warm themselves by the fire. And I'm going to tell you what's going to wind up happening one day. They're going to get burned. That's what's going to happen. People are going to be led astray because they don't pay attention to what's in front of them. There's a wolf that's knocking on a lot of y'all's doors and you are letting him in and he's sitting on your couch. So 
preacher, you don't know my problems. You don't know what's going on with me. I'm telling you this, God birthed this word in my spirit, so it's for somebody. I'm telling you here today that there's somebody in this place, if not more than one, that needs to hear what I'm trying to tell you right now, that you better have a spirit of discernment. Because if not, you're going to wind up one day in a ditch somewhere and you're going to wonder how you got there. Say, preacher, I don't, I don't think that's going to be me. Also says those who wind up in a ditch. We find out that this man had a spirit of discernment. And that spirit of discernment saved him from being killed and it saved him from being destroyed. But most importantly, it saved the glory of God in his life. You want to know what the spirit of discernment will do? It will allow the glory of God to, to radiate from who you are. Because you can see the enemy coming. Many people have spiritual blinders on, and they've got those blinders on because they stop reading the Word of God, they stop praying, they stop coming to the house of God, they stop having a relationship with God, and therefore, they're on a path of destruction. I mean, there's road signs all around them. I mean, there's, there's, there's always a road sign. God will put, he'll put warnings up in front of people before they ever fall in the ditch. But when you've got spiritual blinders on because you don't have a, spiritual, uh, a spirit of discernment, you cannot see those things. You see, Nehemiah knew what was important. He said, we're going to get this wall done. We're going to build this wall. We're going to do what God called us to do no matter what. It don't matter if I lose friends. It don't matter if the rest of the world hates my guts. We're going to get this thing done. Some of you in here today need to put your foot down and say, I've been building this wall. And it don't matter what the world thinks about it. It don't matter what my friends, my family, my co-workers, it does not matter what my grandkids think about it. It doesn't matter what my neighbor down the street thinks about me. Honey, we're going to build this wall. And when the wall gets up, we're going to glorify God. We're going to have a spirit of discernment. We're not going to let the wolf beat on the door and then open it up and let him come in and sit on the couch. Hey, I'm going to tell you something, folks. We need to get ready because the devil is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and you're in the crosshairs. Don't you think for one minute he ain't got a target on your back. Don't you think for one minute he's not trying to destroy your life. He is trying to destroy you at every turn of the road. Nehemiah saw that. Nehemiah understood that. And Nehemiah gave us a great example here in the word of God. Stand on the wall. Stand on the wall. There's bricks that needed to be laid. I'm standing on the wall. There's, there's doors that need to be hung. I'm, I'm going to stand on the wall. There, there, is, uh, there is so much that's got to be done. Spiritually, I've got to stand on the wall. If you don't stand on the wall, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. One day you're going to look up and you're going to wonder what's happened. One day you're going to look up and you're going to think, I can't believe I'm in this place right now. I can't believe that this is where my lack of spiritual uh, um, uh, discernment has led me. Don't be that person. Stand on the wall because the devil's trying to destroy you. Stand on the wall. Let's all stand our feet. <clears throat>